Good morning. Good evening. Thanks everybody for for joining in. Let me let me extend a warm welcome to to everybody. Right. I think uh, I think we have a very special webinar today and a very special speaker. And today we are going to talk about uh, how we are helping pipeline majors uh, with improve their improve their pipeline monitoring. Right. So today we'll talk about the cathodic protection monitoring solution that we have right? uh, and uh, and I could not think of a better person than than Suraj to speak about that right? he is uh, he is the director with IOT5 and uh, he not only consults uh, us on our strategy for oil and gas businesses but also consults you know pipeline majors in Asia Pacific uh, and a few in North America on on how to really make their pipelines safer, uh, more secure to operate, more compliant, um, and while keeping their costs costs minimal, especially in in an economy like this. Right. So, so it's a very very special webinar. Thanks for joining. We'll we'll dive right in. Um, just in terms of you know rules of the road, you know we will mute everybody, right? Uh, as as we hear from Suraj, and then open the forum for all all the all the Q and A uh, that needs to happen. Uh, this will be a recorded webinar, so this will be available to you, uh, you know, if you want to come back to this or share this across, right? So, so let's dive right in. <clears throat> Before we do that, let me, uh, you know, and just in terms of self-promotion, uh, spend a minute talking about IoT5, right? Uh, most of you, you know, uh, know about us, but we are a SimCon Group company, right? Uh, which means that, you know, we bring... Um, almost close to 30 years of heritage in industrial automation. Right? Um, and this was way before there was even a term like IoT. Right? <clears throat> so so what, uh, what we have done over the years is, you know, kind of stayed very focused in a few verticals, like oil and gas, right? um, the topic for webinar today, utilities, water and power, uh, civic supplies, like, uh, like water and waste management uh, and manufacturing mm. across the IoT value chain. You know, uh, we think we think we are really really good at doing the harder parts well. Mm. And by that, what I mean is, you know, things like uh, sensor enablement, smart platforms, you know, sensor to edge connectivity, bringing machine learning from cloud closer to your high value assets, and and all of that. Right. So that's our niche. <clears throat> We have we have developed uh, world leading platforms that have adoption you know, across 30 countries, you know, around 150 cities, right? But today's topic is is a very focused one. Right? It is it is uh, to talk about a solution for cathodic uh, systems monitoring. Yeah. And so you know, with that, you know, I'll hand it over to Suraj. Uh, Suraj, uh, as as I already said, you know. Uh, directs not only us yeah. but the organization. So this is going to be a super engaging conversation. Right. So yeah, without wasting any more time, Suraj, let me let me hand this over to you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Saman, for the introduction. And uh, now, as you can see, uh, we have got uh, IoT Pi now has got various solutions for uh, uh, this cathodic protection solutions. Uh, in oil and gas, uh, just before that, I would like to introduce uh, uh, what oil and gas industry is having. So, oil and gas industry can be divided into three major verticals that is the upstream, midstream, and the downstream. In the upstream, we have got oil and gas explorations, it also caters to production like oil exploration and oil and gas platforms. Uh, from there, the crude oil is being uh, processed or stored or it is uh, transported. So that transportation and the process is being done at the midstream. Uh, that is called the midstream uh, oil and gas vertical in which the crude oil is being transported through pipelines or through storage tanks or stored in the process plants or in the tanks. Further down, it is then transferred from these pipelines. It is transported to this downstream segment. With the downstream segment, we have got like refineries where there's oil, crude oil is being purified, or there is a sales and distribution or retail network where it is finally 
the products are being sold to the customers so it is a customer end that is a downstream and uh, upstream is at the production level so if i know there are various solutions uh, for uh, all of these three verticals in oil and gas sector uh, like uh, we have got cathodic protection solutions for pipelines and storage tanks the cathodic protection system is also applicable for tanks bullets or concrete structures or pipelines uh, iot fino also has got solutions for liquid and gas metering solutions wherein the iot devices can be connected or hooked up to these uh, process equipments and the data can be locally stored or monitored and controlled remotely as well iot also has found uh, applications in terms of well monitoring uh, like uh, oil exploration wells uh, which are remotely scattered oil fields where the oil is being expo explored and uh, various other parameters also like the pressure the load of the uh, load of the pump and uh, motor torque are being monitored so there are various applications and all these applications have been uh, for various uh, oil process equipments but now because they all the majors have been trying to digitize all those equipments so iot has also got lot of applications in that there has been lot of industry challenges like there has been a never ending crude price volatility there have been always a uh, uh, more cleaner energy and health safety and environment guidelines or regulations from all the departments or the utilities in order to have much cleaner energy and uh, have a better and wastewater and water wastewater water recycling plants they have been always being a skill shortage in terms of oil exploration because it is a ever expanding field there have been a various unconfirmed data formats in the upstream uh, in which the data transfer is not able to be taken place from the rig wells to the end users or in the midstream customers so based on that there have been always being a need for digitizing all these upstream middle stream and downstream are the processes so our point of view is that uh, to struggle with this known challenge price volatility is resolved and uh, there has been always been a need for product innovation that will help the end customers a better value for their data or the process so iot fino has got various solutions on this oil and gas cathodic protection systems uh, main products that are being offered are cp scanet uh, which is a real time monitoring system for cathodic protection systems it can be for a pipelines or storage tanks or bullets then there is a power scanet as we know that all these uh, impressed current systems are high power consuming equipments so uh, all these parameters can be monitored in the cp scanet but in order to improve the efficiency of this uh, cathodic protection systems the power uh, is also very important uh, power can be optimized so that the efficiency of these systems can be optimized and monitored so that's the power scanet then also for the transportation part we have got the fleet management system in which now various iot devices can be hooked up to these fleets and they can be remotely monitored over the cloud coming to the cp scanet uh, cp scanet uh, iot fino has uh, provided the world's first gsm based scada system for monitoring the effectiveness of a cathodic protection system uh, these systems can be deployed for a petrochemical plants where in there a lot of pipelines or it can be a cross country pipeline or even for concrete structures for buried uh, uh, foundations for the tanks or vessels so uh, they have uh, been uh, perceived uh, real time data management requirement from the customers from the oil majors they continue to strive to get a proper information instead of a manual recording of all these parameters and reconciling the data uh, from this thousands or millions of reference cells which are scattered over the petrochemical plants uh, this system will help in uh, reactive and proactive management of the cathodic protection system reducing the stray currents or the interference currents in the pipeline which are always 
uh, due to high voltage interference, due to some rail tractions or high voltage lines or some other process equipments. Then, as the cathode protection system has been uh, guided by this new standards, so there have been cathode protection systems which needs to be monitored with these rectifiers, and these rectifiers are impressing the current uh, on these pipelines or this structure to be protected. And in order to comply these rectifiers, they need to meet the NIST standards so that the users can confirm whether these structures are being protected as per the criteria compliance requirements. So the key features of the CP scanet that IoT Fi now offers are like it is a real-time fault monitoring system. It gives the users a fault notification in terms of alerts, in terms of a text message. It also has got AI and ML modules to predict the various failure faults in the system, as well as predict the parameters without actually monitoring the help of sensors. With the help of AI ML, ML models, we can predict or forecast the process parameters and optimize the performance of the equipments. The system offers the off synchronized off potential measurements using GPS based time synchronization. So all these rectifiers can be time synchronized within accuracy of say a 500 nanoseconds to a millisecond. And all the transfer rectifiers in a particular structure or a petrochemical plant will synchronized way of switching off and recording the loggings data and then transporting it to the central application server. All these parameters of the IoT devices can be remotely configured uh, in the system from remotely, uh, which meet the standard criteria compliance requirements. The systems are highly flexible, scalable, in terms of they can interface with a single transformer rectifier also. Apart from that, a single unit can also interface with multi-channel transformer rectifiers and can monitor uh, hundreds of reference cell parameters. These remote monitoring units or the IoT devices have got high impedance channels to accurately measure the pipe to soil potentials of these reference cells and in turn help the maintain the life of the reference cells. As you all know that uh, reference cells are installed in these buried structures which are uh, buried in terms of concrete or in terms of underground sub surface level. So if any life performance issues are reported in the reference cells, it has a huge cost to the utility to repair or replace these reference cells. Those is, hence the system helps in improving the life of the reference cells and optimizing the efficiency of the complete system. As I told, it has got a GPS based time signalization and uh, reports are available in the form of Excel spreadsheets. And in reports, like users can automatically get the reports downloaded in terms of Excel with all the parameters and the trends also. And from the trends, the users can easily see whether the system complies to the NACE standards, the criteria compliance requirements or not. The system has got various communication protocols. It can communicate over wired or wireless networks. It is very compact in size with minimum heat dissipation and low power consumption. There's another unit which I would like to introduce here. One is that is a CTSU. It is a compressed test station unit. Uh, all these rectifiers uh, monitor cells. Points also are monitoring the reference cells across a pipeline. They are located at a predefined uh, distance and uh, they have been located in various fields. So there have been a lot of challenges in this, even in the developed countries where there's a, no power supply available at these test points and the physical security is one of the main concerns also. So uh, IoT Fine now has developed a, a large scale pipeline uh, central computerized station, test station monitoring unit in which the data can be logged locally in this test station unit and uh, then it can be transferred once it is back to the base station. It has got various communication modes also. It can co again communicate over wired or wireless networks. It is very easy to mount it inside a test station point. It is a compact in size. It supplements the test station and it helps the utility or the maintenance team 
instead of going around at a predefined frequency to log those parameters, it helps in uh, monitoring and logging the data automatically at the central location. As we know, it is the uh, test stations are not having any power supply availability. So these are battery operated units, compact in size. They offer a very long battery life of up to two years. Even a solar powered options are also available. Uh, they support various uh, communication protocols, like again, wired and wireless communication protocols. It has got a unique sleep mode feature, which helps in optimizing the power and the battery consumption. It eliminates the common mode noise signals like interference of the overhead lines, the HT lines, or the railway traction lines, and stray currents. It has got a configurable logging frequency. So it can log, a, we can say every hour, or it can log once in a day also. So these units have been installed at various uh, utilities and they've been working. So that was the basic uh, introduction to all of these Kazakh Persian systems, wherein this IoT FI now has provided these devices, uh, wherein the utilities can monitor their assets efficiently and effectively. Now we'd like to open the forum for any question and answers so that we can have a discussion on that also. Feel free to ask any questions which you feel. This was this, this, this was really good. This was really good, uh, Suraj. You know, thanks for not only covering you know the CP monitoring solution that IoT5 has, but really the whole gamut of solutions across the three verticals, right? So, forum, yeah, by all means, you know, feel free to ask away. You know, any questions? I certainly have a couple, okay? but I'll I'll let I'll let uh, everybody go first. Uh, yes, Suraj. So I would how much time it takes to implement the solution and is there any timeline for it? Okay, uh, that is a good question. So now uh, as these products are already designed and deployed at various uh, applications in for various customers. So it is just uh, like a manufacturing time that is required. Uh, so we can divide that time into two parts. One is the supply part and the execution part. So supplies can be effectively on a typical basis for a project like application when we have got say uh, 10 to 50 units requirements of a uh, remote monitoring iot devices with a central management application it would take around uh, six to eight weeks time to manufacture and supply those items uh, and then the execution time at site is uh, like services part it depends upon the site readiness and availability and it depends upon the site conditions so uh, that can be deployed immediately. It is very easy to install these uh, units and they are pre-configured, factory configured units are available, which can be provided and uh, they can be easily deployed by the customers at site. Hope that answers the query. Oh, all right, all right. Uh, so I certainly have one more question. Uh, what, what kind of does it support? Uh, the systems are supporting all types of communication. We can say that wired or wireless communication networks in wired, like uh, these uh, high end uh, multi channel units support uh, serial communication, modbus serial, or they even support TCP IP wired networks. Uh, it also supports like Ethernet communication over fiber optic. So that wired connection is available. And also, in terms of wireless, uh, they have got connectivity like cellular connectivity or a satellite con connectivity is also available. It also supports uh, radio connectivity uh, like uh, NVIT, cellular, or LoRa networks also are compatible with these devices. It is a modular architecture in which these have been designed and developed. So based on the customers or the project requirements, the commission networks will be adapted. Uh, okay, okay, thank you. Thank you so much for, for session thanks Ajit. yeah thank, thank thanks yeah. Suraj. i think uh, this was very very informative right very informative yeah. and, and uh, covered not only the cp monitoring but also 
IoT Fire's solutions across the oil and gas verticals. Right? So with that, you know, I'll I'll open it to the forum. Right? By all means, you know, go go ahead and you know ask away any of the questions. Uh, if you have say, uh, questions around this specific problem you are trying to solve, then we can definitely you know do a follow up with you. But yeah, over to you, forum. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks, Suraj. Uh, I have questions. How this cathodic protection monitoring system? Uh, first of all, uh, this system having a only monitoring or a control solutions. And if it is with the control, how uh, your systems can give us the depolarization or instant of uh, value gettings and reports? Does it uh, gives all the solutions? Okay, yeah, so that is a very good question. And basically, uh, yeah, uh, these remote monitoring have got both uh, monitoring and control uh, features. They can monitor the transformer rectifiers or the process plant, like they can monitor the pipe to soil potentials, as well as they can control them. And when we say the controls, they can even control a new transformer rectifier, which is like a, installed in a greenfield project, or they can the system with existing fires, which are like uh, legacy equipments in the process plants. So with that also, these units can be interfaced. They can uh, monitor the parameters and even they can control the parameters also. Of course, uh, if the transfer rectifiers don't have the controls, then we need to add the modules of controls in terms of switching the output off or on in the transfer rectifiers. But that is feasible and these mon systems monitor and control. Coming to the next point, uh, next question had, uh, if they are able to control this, yeah, these remote monitoring units can even log the in instant of readings. As uh, I was just explaining that they've got time synchronized uh, units. So all these units can be synchronized with respect to time uh, with a very good accuracy. So once they're synchronized, they will switch on or they will control the transfer rectifiers in a synchronized manner. And so, uh, as we all know, that in terms of uh, criteria compliance for this cathodic protection systems, it is a mandatory requirement that the transfer rectifiers should be in a synchronized switch off mode. And the instant of readings, uh, which uh, we get with the true RMS readings, which you get after delay of, say, 100 milliseconds or 200 milliseconds, depending upon the process uh, application, like uh, for a pipeline or a bullets, tanks, or a complete structures, the instant of readings can be logged in the system, and then they can be transferred. And all these reports or the data that is logged are available in the form of Excel automatically to the users, and in terms of uh, criteria compliance reports also. So ultimately, the user will just get a whether that structure is protected or not in terms of a yes or no. So it is very easy for the user to understand how the system is performing and what are the conclusions of the criteria compliance test. So coming to the applications point in the petrochemical plants or the concrete structures, uh, there is a mandatory requirement that because the structures are polarized and in order to depolarize the structure, and the concrete uh, reinforced steel takes a lot of time. Uh, like say, not only in hours, it takes uh, days and even months also. So the uh, remote monitoring and these devices, because they've got a large memory capacity, they can store all those parameters, log all those parameters, uh, control the transfer rectifier, and carry out this depolarization test. And this depolarization test will be in, uh, terms the data available in the form of a spreadsheet, in the form of a graph, depolarization graph, from which the users can automatically get the maximum decay or the instant of potentials. And the system will automatically conclude whether this criteria test has been passed in this depolarization test or not. So it helps the users monitor the system automatically and gives them the report. Hope I'm able to answer the question yeah the, yeah it's absolutely fine that's great uh, sounds good thank you very much perfect any any other questions and, and rcp monitoring solution is a conversation we are having with uh, 
couple of US all majors too. Right. So it's getting a lot of lot of adoption. Yeah. Any any other questions? Yeah, hi, hi Suraj. Nice presentation. So just want to know where all this has been deployed. So uh, these systems have been deployed for various uh, utilities in all majors, like in Asia, Middle East, Asia Pacific, and Europe region also. And uh, means these systems have been working since last several years. Like uh, we can say that uh, since last 20 years, these systems have been working successfully and uh, they have got a very long design life. Uh, as I say that they have been working since last 20 years and still they are continuing to work. So they have got a long life of the equipments and uh, we just under hundreds or even I can say systems have been installed and they have been operating and be maintained by the users uh, very easily. Great. Any any other questions? Now, as as we were having this conversation, I was thinking, you know, like pipelines can always be kind of you know isolated, countrywide implementations, but. I spent a long time in Canada. I think uh, the environments are just perfectly suited for a solution like this because you know you could go literally hundreds of miles and not see another human being, right? and the environment is so tough. You know, at least six months of the year that you know that this is a super relevant solution, and uh, we are trying to have some conversations with Canadian pipeline majors too. But yeah, if there are any, any, I, I think we, we might have time for one last question. If there is one, otherwise, you know, we can just call it a wrap. I think I think we had a great session today. Okay, awesome. So once again, you know, thanks, thanks, Suraj. I think it's time to wind up. Uh, I'm pretty sure the forum got huge value from this. Um, you know, this is recorded. It's there on our website. By all means, you know. Uh, have a look again, share this across to folks who might have missed, and we will look to chat with you in uh, the next webinar in our series on this one. Once again, thanks. Thanks, everybody. Let's, let's sign off. Have a good day. Thank, sure. thanks, thanks, thanks for the time. Thanks, thanks.